Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment of our show brought to you by Tenova Healthcare. No one in East Tennessee offers more medical services than Tenova. From their Cancer Care Center to their Heart Institute, from their Men's Center, uh, Men's Health Center of Excellence, to their Labor and Delivery Center, Stroke Center, Robotic Surgery Center, from allergy treatment to orthopedic care, do what I do, do what my family does. Turn to Tenova Healthcare when you have a healthcare need. All right, back with Don, Jimmy, Mark, and Houston. Earlier this week, Southern Miss self-imposed a postseason ban on itself in anticipation or trying to fend off uh, viola uh, penalties that will be coming their way from the NCAA due to violations that occurred while Donnie Tindall was the head coach at Southern Miss. We don't, the, the letter of allegations has not been publicized yet. Uh, we don't know exactly what it's going to say, but the fact that they went ahead and self-imposed penalties. What does that tell us? And I'll start with the two guys down there, Houston and Mark. Feelings, should Tennessee fans be a little more worried? Should, is there any reason to worry yet? Thoughts on the fact that they imposed their, their own set of penalties? Well, I, I don't think that this tells us any more than we already knew. I, mean, I think we know something's went, went down down there, and I think this is Southern Miss's way of getting out in front and saying, all right, we made these mistakes. We're going to pull ourselves out of postseason. Even though we're 0-5 right, right now, we have no chance of making it anyway. And I said, let's put lipstick on a pig. That's like me saying I'm not going to be in a Mr. Universe contest. <laughs> okay? That's just what they've done here. So I don't think it tells us anything more than we already know. We've gotten rid of a couple assistants. They made their moves down there. You're sort of putting yourself in position for when this letter of allegation does come out to say, all right, we've already done this. We've self-imposed this. So maybe they won't hit us as hard when the time comes. Yeah, I think it's just all positioning. You're just trying to position yourself that we do have control of our athletic department. We we know what was going on, and we have an idea now, and so we're trying to take it, take care of some things before the NCAA comes in. Um, but I don't think we can read into it how it's going to affect Donnie, other than the fact that there is going to be something, and whether that not bleeds all the way up to, to Coach Tyndall, um, if the the release of Adam Howard and the staff member is enough, uh, or does it go continue up chain of command up to Coach Tyndall is to be determined. I've said repeatedly that I think Tennessee will do whatever it can. I think they'll even put up with. Uh, suspensions next year if they have to. I think they'll do whatever they can to hold on to this coach because I don't think they want to go anywhere near another coaching search unless they have to. The academic thing would scare me. If it goes in the academic realm, that would be a concern. Uh, but it still sounds like it's more, at least on the surface, there's a lot of rumors about the academic side. still sounds on the surface, though, that this has more to do with room and board supplied to players who shouldn't be given room and board when they arrived on campus. Jimmy, you spoke to someone and uh, that covers USM mm -hmm. this week from Hattiesburg on your radio show. What did, did they enlighten you at all? What did they tell you? Well, Jason Munns, who's a beat reporter, and he covered Southern Miss basketball when Donnie Tindall was there. He said that to his knowledge, all of the focus was on the tuition and the room and board, and he had not heard or been able to uncover much as far as the academic fraud situation. So that's where he felt it was. Obviously, in his opinion, in most people's opinion, it's an admission of guilt to a certain point. But when the NCAA is going to do something, how they're going to do it, I've come to believe that the NCAA precedent is synonymous with arbitrary. <laughs> you don't know what they're going to do. Especially after so, the Miami case. Exactly. That's, yeah, so especially what, after so that. you, you don't know what they're going to do. I do think that there's, a, there's just a small penalty toward Tyndall. Tennessee will do everything they can to keep him because he's proven he's a good floor coach. Yeah. If there's a show cause, I think it's going to be hard to keep him. I would be surprised if it's a show cause. but. It, he's a repeat offender. Like if they look at him as a repeat offender, and that's the concern, you know, I don't know what he did. None of us know what he did. But he was at Moorhead State, and they wound up on probation with major penalties. He was at Southern Miss. They're under investigation. They've already self-imposed penalties. That's two for two. That's a concern. Don DeVoe, I've been asked this. I'm going to let you answer it yourself. Uh, you've been you've been very upfront with your feelings about Bruce Pearl and, and hit the allegate well the allegation the proven violations that were on him. Uh, you seem to be a bit more nuanced in your approach to the Donnie Tindall situation until all the the facts are in. What's the difference in your mind between those two coaches in this situation? Well, I would say that I'm I'm in favor of supporting any coach I think that is doing the right thing. You know, when you're doing the right thing out there as a leader, you know, you have to be a leader. You know, because you know you are the person that the players are following, the fans are following. You know, if you're not going to be doing the right things, you can't expect your players to do the right things. Uh, you know, this thing with regards to whether or not you know Donnie Tindall is guilty of anything or not. 
I think remains to be seen. You know, obviously, uh, it, it appears to me that you know the administration down at Southern Miss should have called Auburn or they should have called Lexington, Kentucky, to find out how to handle the NCAA. You know, they <laughs> obviously don't know you know too much about how to handle these kind of situations. They should have called the other schools because you know of the fact that they are involved with these kind of issues all the time. But I I would say this that you know that we don't know enough about what has happened with regards to Donnie Tendo and what occurred down at Southern Miss. I think what we have to do now is continue to support you know, this coach and this program until we know actually what has happened. Uh, I think Donnie Tindall's done a tremendous job, much better than I ever anticipated. You look at that roster, and no offense to those players. They're the ones out there doing it. They're giving it their all. It's impressive. It's incredible so far I think what this, they've done. I, I think this at team, the same time. Yeah, this, this team has overachieved. I, mm -hmm. I, there's no question. You know, no one anticipated this basketball team winning its first three games on the road. You know, and that tells me that he's got the players here. He's conditioning them the way they have to be conditioned. He's doing a wonderful job with this basketball team thus far. But at the same time, as good a job as he's done, it's gonna it's gonna leave some squirming, I think, yeah. for the University of Tennessee administration if if there are findings against if Tyndall's named in this NCAA thing, anything more than the fail to promote an a, a, you know, air of compliance that all these guys get. If there's anything more than that, if he's named, I think it's gonna be. I think they'll try and keep him, but you're gonna look kind of silly doing it. And I think there're gonna be some people on the on the national front who say, you're sticking by this guy, but you didn't stick by Pearl. I don't think that's a fair argument, but I think you'll hear it. Thoughts on that at all? Anybody? You think that this, I, or do you think that the situations are two completely different deals? I, I think you have a serious problem with regards to your contract because these contracts are well written, and you know the the universities today they cover all these issues. You know you have mm -hmm. to be so careful not to perjure yourself if you did know, you know that you did have some problems and you didn't admit it. You know, coming in the front mm -hmm. door. That's that's where you really have a problem as far as I think Coach Tindall is concerned. I think the biggest thing for Coach Tindall is just win. I mean, sure. if, he can t if he can win and, and people continue to buy him to him, all the other NCAA stuff will just end up playing itself out. That's the only thing he can worry, out, or worry about because just like all these guys have said, we just don't know. And, yeah. it's a, and we don't know how it'll end up. But if he can win and all of a sudden there's a lot more butts in the seats, that does if – it, if NCAA does not say – show clause, you're firing him. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden, if he's got fan support, they're making money, right? Yep. And th it's much harder for him to get rid of them. Well, and I think, look, if, if UT didn't know very well, and if you watch this show, the months leading up to that thing, as soon as we found out Bruce Pearl had lied, we showed you that prior to Miami, every coach in every sport that lied to the NCAA got a show cause penalty. We knew it was coming, Tennessee figured it out. If it's not a show cause, I think Bruce Pearl is still your coach. So that's the difference. And I don't think Tyndall's gonna be hit with anything big enough to be a show cause, but we'll see. All right, uh, when we come back, we talked a little bit about Tennessee's offensive coordinator search. Who else could be the guy? Come on back on the Sports Source. Quality, quick, trust fast frame. 